Teachers sexting students. It's allowed through a loophole in the law. The plan to fix it has its own loophole. Senator Cory Gardner's first big name challenger might have his own challenge, getting his fellow Democrats to support him. Would you like to go to jail? They'll let you out, and you might just change a life while you're in there. And a zoo's evacuation plan hinges on how well monkeys follow instructions. That's next. Teachers shouldn't be sexting with students. That is an opinion, and I understand that some people do not like those on the news, but I'm going to stand by it. Teachers, don't be sexting kids. We told you about the legal loophole in Colorado that does not ban sexually explicit chats between teachers and 15, 16, or 17 year olds. Our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger, found the bill to close that loophole still leaves an opening. Sexual text messages, sexting. Do I have your attention? The text messages were graphic, very graphic in nature, and you'll hear more details about those. But that wasn't a crime. An adult sending sexually charged words to a 15, 16, or 17-year-old is not illegal in Colorado. The more I started to dig into it, I realized that actually there is a pretty big loophole that exists here. In December, we told you about a Craig teacher found not guilty. The teacher was charged with 10 felony counts of sexual exploitation of a child based on evidence that he allegedly elicited three nude photographs of a female student over the course of a sexually explicit text message exchange. The photos and videos were never recovered. The charge of sexual exploitation of a child was hinged on or hinges on the presence of an image, a sexual image. We didn't have the images, we just had the victim's testimony that the images existed. The legislation by Republican Representative Matt Soper and Democratic Representative Dylan Roberts would make those kind of texts illegal even if the photos and videos are not found. Well, it makes the photos and videos themselves irrelevant at all. The new law would criminalize someone in a position of trust from even requesting that type of photo or video from a child. But if the adult sexted in words only, this bill would not have closed that loophole. A teacher or coach who says to a child, I find you very attractive, here are all the sexually explicit things I would like to do to you. Uh, this bill will not cover that conduct. We're going to have to address that particular conduct in a future bill or, or with a future legislature. I was just in that building not even an hour ago when this bill stalled. It is on hold because of a concern that by targeting people in a position of trust, teachers, coaches, clergy, it might also target doctors having sexual text conversations with patients about sexual health, which would have a purpose and not be for gratification or anything inappropriate. Yeah. So there's no vote so far. You can continue to sex with students oh, because great. of the concern that we might be roping in sex educators and doctors. Because prosecutors will just suddenly lose their sense of judgment and will start charging doctors. Which no one had proof that it's ever been charged currently under the system now. This whole thing is bonkers. All right, we'll follow it. Thank you, Marshall. I cannot figure out for the life of me why Colorado's Republican Senator Cory Gardner endorsed President Trump yesterday. So, you know, Gardner used to be in that never Trump Republican contingent. He swears that he did not vote for him in 2016. He senses warmed up to him. You've got other Senate Republicans who are in tough races like Gardner, and they're hedging on whether or not they're going to support President Trump. But Gardner just came out and did it yesterday. I don't think it's fear of a primary challenge from another Republican, but it certainly is interesting timing considering everything that Gardner's been doing to distance himself from the president lately. So today, Senator Gardner got his first big-name challenger on the Democratic side, former state senator Mike Johnston of Denver. Johnston is feared by Republicans. The problem is, it's not clear if enough Democrats like Johnston to get him to the general election. Do you intend to make this race about Senator Gardner or about President Trump? I think it's about both. I mean, you saw Senator Gardner endorse President Trump yesterday, and they have both run away from the hardest problems, issues like climate change or gun violence that Americans care mostly about. And instead, they've created all these new problems, like trying to take health care away from the million Coloradans who need it the most or shutting down the government. And I think Coloradans are looking for a senator who's going to run at the toughest problems and who's going to have the leadership to actually bring progressive policies to solve them. So you got into the race this morning, and I got a stack of emails from all these national Republican groups <laughs> jumping all over. For you and it reminds me of the race for governor in which you lost yeah. the Democratic primary. A lot of Republicans would tell me that you were the Democrat that they feared the most. The Republicans don't want anything to do with you. 
Your problem is, though, with all due respect, a lot of Democratic primary voters don't want anything to do with you either. You finished third in that primary. What makes you think you're going to fare better in this Democratic primary? Well, it's a, it is a strange form of flattery that the Republicans were certainly very worried that I got in this morning. And I think, you know, they know that Cory Gardner is really at risk, and they know that I'm a uh, progressive who's been able to pass real bold policy who they know can win. Education is your area of expertise. What's one federal education policy that you would like to lead on and change? Well, one of the most important issues we're seeing in education right now is funding, which you see playing out in Colorado and around the country, which we can't afford to keep great teachers in a system where we have one of the lowest paid teacher forces in the country. So I think one of the big issues has to be we ought to realign federal priorities around putting more federal dollars into education so that we can actually attract great teachers, keep them, and support them. I think that's one of the places where we ought to be doing less subsidies uh, for some of these multinational corporations and more dollars to fund the schools that need them the most. We will post our full conversation with Mike Johnston on the next YouTube channel. There we talk about some of the details of his climate change and gun control plans and also why Johnston thinks it's too early for Democrats to be talking about impeaching President Trump. Kaufman. You remember Mike Kaufman. The Republican representative from Aurora was only voted out of the U.S. House last year. He announced today he's running for Aurora mayor. Stop to consider his long career in public service. Everyone respects his service in the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Plus, he was in the Colorado House, then the Colorado Senate. He was state treasurer, then the Secretary of State before he went to Congress. So now Kaufman wants to add mayor to that crowded resume. Kaufman said today as mayor he would focus on affordable housing in Aurora, public safety, and transportation. You can expect that there could be quite a few candidates in Aurora's nonpartisan mayoral election, which is in November. The USS Pueblo, the pride of Colorado's Steel City, it is the only American ship still held by a foreign government. And Colorado Senate President Leroy Garcia, he's from Pueblo, and he's thinking, you know what, maybe President Trump can get the ship back from North Korea. The president, of course, brags about his chumminess with the North Korean dictator as well as his negotiating prowess. So how about that ship? Garcia is asking President Trump to negotiate the release of the Pueblo when he meets with Kim Jong-un next month. The ship was captured while on an intelligence mission in 1968. The crew was held in often brutal conditions for 11 months. And the Pueblo is still a public point of pride for North Korea. Denver Public Schools found another three million bucks. It said that it did not have to pay teachers who have voted to strike. You are looking live inside the bargaining room where the two sides are talking tonight. They have taken a break, the teachers have, to mull over this latest offer from the district. DPS says it'll eliminate 100 jobs at central office and put millions more into teacher pay for the 2020-2021 school year. The teachers, based on what they've always said, want five million more dollars but they're discussing this offer we'll keep you updated and we're still days away from learning if the state is going to intervene to block a strike boulder county has an interesting ask you want to go to jail you know hang out spend some quality time with the inmates inmates who insist they are ready to change their ways our Nusha roy has the story my name is Frank Lopez. I am currently a resident here at Boulder County Jail. I grew up in the system. Uh, at the age of 11, I went to my first foster home. Frank Lopez has been in and out of jail and made a lot of mistakes, some violent, some involving drugs and impacting his family. I was getting into fights and getting moved to solitary confinement and maximum pod. Tired of trying to do the same thing and wanting a different result. So he signed up for class. A lot of things that I did, I didn't really feel like I had any victims. So I didn't really take too much responsibility for what I did. I didn't think that it was impacting society as much as it was. But in Victims Impact, I actually learned that there is no victimless crime. In no way is the program meant to sort of excuse or forgive their behavior. It's all about recognizing why you did it and resolving not to do it again. Catherine Murphy says the lessons are only obvious if someone bothered to teach them before. Where do the volunteers step in? The volunteers, like myself, we, we, we just dedicate our time. They come in in the first class and I think everybody's test, testing me to see how much they can get away with. Gradually they realize that there's something in this for them. What I think would happen if I left without it? I think that I would have stayed in the recidivism part. I would have kept coming back. Then it's up to the inmate to decide what to do next. You know, I, I wake up every morning feeling like I have a purpose. Um, actually, since I've been here and been in this program, I actually am going to college when I get out now.
It's an interesting ask and it's not for everyone. And here is a gap that specifically through this class, there's not a ton of follow up after the inmates are done with the course. But if they are leaving the Boulder County Jail, there's other groups, Kyle, that are helping them out with resources, hopefully to keep them on the right track. But ultimately, it's choices. Sure. I mean, so I don't want to be a killjoy, but I'm sure they've thought about safety, bringing civilians in face to face sure. with inmates. Yeah, and they're in the classroom, just, you know, two on maybe a dozen inmates. Deputies are around so that it's easy to call them in. Mm -hmm. And Catherine, who you heard from, said she's had three times she's asked to have asked people to leave in the last 10 years. Interesting. All right. Thank you, Nusha. The way that food tastes to you and not to someone else could depend on things we never imagined. And I just think it's so fascinating that there's things around the human body that we don't know. And a zoo in Colorado that is teaching its animals how to evacuate in an emergency. No, really. That's next. So you always hear about how whole grains are, are healthy for you. I had no idea until we did this story that to some people, whole wheat, like whole wheat bread, tastes sweet. For others, whole wheat tastes bitter. Researchers at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science are investigating why. Your DNA and changes to your DNA make you who you are, make you unique. It affects not only things you can see like hair color and eye color, but also how you taste things. I'm Dr. Nicole Garneau, and I am the curator and chair of the Health Sciences Department here at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. Flavor is the number one reason year after year after year in lots and lots and lots of studies that we have the food choice that we have. The Genes and Grains study is funded by the National Institutes of Health. It's a SEPA grant. Our hypothesis is that the same gene, and a gene is just like a recipe for something your body makes, if the same gene that makes stevia tastes really bitter to some people, um, might be involved in why whole wheat tastes bitter to some people. So there's different wheats that we're playing with here today. And when your goal is try to figure out which pairs are the same. We do taste tests. We're going to open up your lab notebooks here. These cheek swabs, essentially, that help. It's kind of like a CSI, right? Helps us collect DNA from people so we can look at their DNA. If we see that there really are these differences and it affects a large percent of the population, then we can think about people who are at home who no wouldn't normally buy whole wheat flour to cook with, for example. They'll start doing that because we know we can make recipe modifications, like adding a little bit of orange juice or honey, things that up the sweetness so that the flavor is good, but you're getting a more nutritious product for yourself and your family. I just think it's so fascinating that there's things around the human body that we don't know. There's this art piece and this social piece around eating that because I study it now, I have so much more understanding of how that plays into the human experience and the joy you can derive from eating. Oh, oh, I know the joy. Uh, Dr. Garno says her work has helped her to have more empathy for kids like her daughter as they work through trying new foods. You know the faces, right? And she recognizes that those tastes will likely change as kids get older. Fascinating stuff. A beautiful day up in the mountains, the eastern plains, gorgeous all the way around. Bill Linfield capturing this awesome shot. This is out there at Lake Dillon. was just up there last weekend driving around, and it is stunning. The weather fantastic as we're winding down the month of January. As far as our stats go here in Denver, temperature-wise, just a bit above where we should be. Precip, three-quarters of an inch, and snowfall out of DIA, 6.2 official inches. But, of course, downtown we saw a bit more. Pretty quiet here in Colorado. We are watching some snow, though, moving back into the Midwest, as well as the cold temperatures, still wind chill advisories for parts of Michigan, and then stretching through New Hampshire, Vermont, and up toward uh, into the main area. Tonight, 25, mostly clear skies, teens, 20s for the eastern plains. It will get cold, sub zero in Alamosa yet again. Tomorrow, we're at 56 with mostly sunny skies, 60 degrees in Yuma, 30s and 40s up in the mountains. Your seven day forecast. Look at Saturday, 61. It should be beautiful. We will be tracking some snow in the mountains on Sunday. Windy conditions here in the metro. Those continue Monday and then Tuesday and into Wednesday. That's the next time here in Denver, Kyle. We'll see some snow. No, no, no. Don't talk about that. Saturday and Sunday. All right. Yes, yeah, Saturday on the and Sunday. All right. Thank you, Danielle. Mm -hmm. The Cheyenne Mountain Zoo in the Springs is kind of an excrement magnet, if you know what I mean. Disasters just seem drawn to that place. It got hit by that monster hailstorm, you remember that? And there are always wildfires popping up somewhere nearby. So that zoo smartly has an evacuation plan. The staff knows what to do, and so do some of the animals. Now, it's not as simple as the normal crate training that animals get because Don't. Rudy the monkey and the others need to all go into their crates at once in an emergency. So zookeepers teach the monkeys to all get in their crates at once, pull in their tails, and shut the crate doors. Humans come by and latch them. 
the lead zookeeper in Rudy's exhibit, tells us that Rudy is really the star with the emergency training because he doesn't mind getting in his crate early and then just waiting on the three ladies who live with him because they need a little bit longer to get ready to leave the house. He just hangs out in the crates and eats potato and he has it pretty good. The girls are all getting used to being in the crate for longer durations and that's what we're working on right now. Yeah, you know what we're talking about. The animals get the training two to three times a week. The main idea is to get them comfortable to being in the crates for longer periods of time so they could get moved to other buildings to have better fire protection. The large animals, they already have buildings with more fireproofing, so no fire drills for the giraffes. He's got a couple miles on him, but as long as he's willing to go visit, I, I'll take him to, to visit with uh, our patients. We will meet a rescue dog turned therapy dog on a mission. And it is a sign of confusion in the suburbs or an invitation to go your own way. No, don't do that. It's a drive through. That's next. Bailey is a dedicated volunteer. 500 visits to senior living communities in our area. Bailey didn't start doing this work until he was rescued nine years ago. I should mention Bailey's a dog. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Good boy. Are those liver flavored? Mm -hmm. He likes liver flavored. I'm Ken Cruz, and this is my dog, Bailey. Good boy. <laughs> He's very laid back and very gentle. I want you to scratch his head and neck right here for me. I found him, like you're doing, yeah. back in 2009. Okay. And when I brought him home, within 10 minutes, my wife had named him Bailey. I don't know where she came up with it, but she said he looks like a Bailey. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Good boy. And he's been in therapy work for about nine years. A therapy dog is trained to give emotional support. Good boy. And we go to watch your head. Watch your head. Three different assisted living and memory care units within the Denver area. Hi Sandy. How are you? You good? I brought Bailey to see you. You want to pet Bailey? Their eyes light up when Bailey walks into the room and he is a real joy to them. You want to listen to music? You like that song, don't you? I love it. Oh, good. The world is a better place because of people like Ken and Bailey. Over the course of their seven or eight years, they've made 500 stops in their journey. You like music, right? I love it. It's an accomplishment. Okay. When we think back on all the people that we visited with, did you want to pet Bailey? Ken's uh, just getting awarded and recognized for doing a lot of good. From my personal experience, I didn't realize how fulfilling it was. And I think I get more out of it than the patients that we visit. He likes you. My payment is, is the good feelings that my patients get. Oh, you're quite welcome. Ah, sweet boy. Ken's a good guy, too. Ken told our photojournalist Corky Scholl that they will stay at this so long as Bailey is healthy. We are back soon with your feedback and a sign that reminds me of politics because everybody is sure that we should all go one way, that way. He has his right arm hanging at his side as he skates towards the bench like a zombie. It's a sign of directional disorientation in the suburbs. A McDonald's drive through in Broomfield that probably does not want people driving in both directions. Our colleague Nate spotted this one. Send us the signs that are funny enough to share with a friend or family member. Use the hashtag HeyNext or email them to next at 9news.com. People are kind in feedback tonight. Rita writes in, you've grown on me. You remind me of David Muir. That's really cool. He's a fellow Ithaca College bomber. Rita continues, and I like your plaid jackets, but you don't have one on tonight. While Marietta tweets, plaid jacket looks awesome. So what do you think? Team Rita or Team Marietta? They can't both be, right? We'll see you next time. Subscribe to the next YouTube channel for the best of next and some other stuff.